welcome to another episode of Resiliency Radio with Dr. Jill. Today, we're going to talk about healthy homes, and I cannot wait to introduce our guest. But just a reminder, you can find our podcast anywhere you listen or watch podcasts on YouTube, on Stitcher, on iTunes, or Spotify. Please stop by, leave a review, share if you love it, and uh, subscribe on YouTube if you want to get all the latest episodes. Today, without further ado, I really want to introduce our guests. We got actually introduced by a mutual friend in publishing. They have an amazing new book out that I cannot wait to share. Um, it's one of those where we were just talking before we got on. I always love the books where they actually feel good. They look good. They're beautiful. This is one of those books that you actually want on your coffee table. <laughs> and it's it, that's where, where mine is in our office. It's in our, our waiting room, literally for patients as they come in. It's one of the things that I have. We don't have a lot in the waiting room, but it's one of those things like this has to go in the waiting room. So it's a really beautiful. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, And great job. So your book is called, I have it right here. I want to say, right, Healthier Homes, A Blueprint for Creating a Toxic-Free Living Environment. Now, I know there's going to be so many people who listen to my podcast, who are patients, who are clients, who are just fans, that this is going to be a great episode they're going to want to share and re-listen to because this is a topic I cannot tell you the number of questions I get asked about, and I cannot wait to dive dive in uh, because you guys are clearly the experts. Let me just briefly introduce you and we'll jump right in. So Jen Stout has a bachelor in journalism from the University of Colorado Boulder and an MBA from Southern Methodist University when she discovered that her chronic health issues were the result of toxic black mold. She set out to build one of the first truly healthy homes using mainstay modern day building materials. She was the executive director of the Hill County uh, Country Builder Association in Central Texas when she met Rusty, and together they founded JS2 Partners Healthy Home Builders. Since then, they've become nationally recognized leaders in healthy home building and home design. And Rusty brings 20 plus years of home building experience to JS2 Partners. Am I saying that right, correctly? Yes. <laughs> Cool. Um, he was president of the Hill Count Country um, Builders Association Board of Directors and is a member of the Texas Association of Builders, a national association of home builders. He has served as a building trades education mentor for high school students and a licensed realtor in the state of Texas. And of course, this new book we were talking about today, Health. <laughs> For, by both of you guys. And like I said, I want to just emphasize you guys want to get this book. This is something you want to actually feel and touch and flip through. It is gorgeous. You've done a great job. <laughs> thank you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Of course. Thank you for inviting us on. <laughs> yeah. So I'd love, we heard just a little tiny glimpse, Jen, of your story, but tell us a little bit about the journey that led to where you're at now with building healthy homes and then even writing a manual, a book for so many people out there that are suffering like um, you have. Tell us a bit more about your journey. Um, yeah, I never really set out to be a builder, but I guess you could say building definitely found me. Um, it was a little bit over 10 years ago. I was in grad school in Dallas at SMU. Um, pursuing my MBA. I'd always been super healthy and like active and I started getting really tired and got like rashes all over my body. I ended up losing most of my hair. So I had to wear a wig for several years and I had gone to doctors all over the country. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. I was like this medical mystery child. And um, right before graduation, I found this horrific black mold problem behind the walls of my apartment. And I was like, man, this has to be at least like what is like going on with me, at least some of it. And so um, I found an environmental doctor, Dr. Ray in Dallas, and um, they found high levels of mycotoxins in my body, the ones from like stachybotrys. So they're all bad, but that one's like especially terrible. Um, and I learned that it, it wreaked havoc on my health. My immune system had basically crashed. Um, I became allergic and sensitive to everything around me, not just like molds and grasses, but like everything I was eating, all my foods, um, my fabrics I was wearing, the makeup, uh, shampoos, um, and the chemicals were the worst. And that was a real problem because formaldehyde and like petroleum solvents, they're used in everything in construction materials nowadays. And so I was in this conundrum. I couldn't figure out a place to live where I wouldn't react to things because I become so sensitive to mold. And I walk into a house that maybe had a few years to off gas the chemicals and I'd react to like some little amount of mold in the HVAC, HVAC system or, you know, in the showers, whatnot. So 
Um, I looked online and I couldn't find anyone that did healthy home building. It was like this not even like thought of yet. And I was like, well, I'm just going to take my research skills and I'm going to build myself my first healthy home. And I did. Um, I researched every screw, every piece of concrete, drywall, like everything that goes into a home. Um, it took a couple years. And the big focus for me really was no VOCs, no HAPs, hazardous air pollutants, also looking at indoor air quality and water quality. And not long after that, this is in Houston, I'd moved back home to be closer to my family. I received a job opportunity here in Central Texas where we live now, with the Hill Country Builders Association as their director. And so I was like, I did this once, I can do it again. So yeah. I moved out here. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty. He was um, actually the president at the HCBA at the time. And we fell in love, got married. <laughs> And what was really cool about it is I had this body of knowledge about how to build homes healthy. And he kind of, he is learning that through our processes. And I also learned how to build from him. <laughs> so we just started JS2 Partners. Yeah. It was his idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much because uh, as you know, for you're just saying, you're reading my book, my, my story, whenever we can take something that's so difficult and the suffering and the tragedy and like the awfulness that you had to go through. And I'm so sorry because it is so painful and, and even more painful, I think, for you, for my patients, for so many people out there that are even listening. You have these mystery symptoms and you're told that, oh, it's all in your head or you need an antidepressant or these crazy things that are literally medical gaslighting. You know there's something not right. Yeah. I mean, you're losing your hair. And what you described is so classic with mold because it massively weakens immune system, especially that nasty black stachybotry metabolites. And so then all the, you know, you're very susceptible and it also usually triggers the mast cells, which makes histamine go crazy. And that's one of the reasons people lose hair and then all this massive reaction to chemicals and the gut gets permeable. So there's like this whole slew yeah. of things that you described. And I'm thinking medically, I know what's going on, right? Um, this is first like of all, I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry that you had to go through that, but what a great blessing that you met Rusty. And I think God had another plan, <laughs> like on the bigger picture. That's definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> because how cool that um, I just, I love that. And I love, love when there's meaning and purpose um, in the midst of difficulty and when things get transformed to the good work that you guys are doing in the world. And it's so needed. I mean, this call, I could not wait to talk to you because oh, well, literally, you. really, truly one of the biggest questions, I mean, I do medicine, right? I do my little thing and I do it well, just that in the office, but environmental remediation and building homes and finding safe places to live. I can find people like you to help patients, but I'm not the expert and I can learn like you did, Jen, but I'm certainly not as knowledgeable as you guys. So you bring this incredible, important knowledge because so many people are finding they can't buy a place. For example, right outside me, I'm in a condo and right outside me, there's lots and lots of multi condos and apartments being built right now, crazy amounts. And I'm watching them as they wood up in the midst of these rainstorms. They're not letting it dry. I mean, you know, and I'd love to talk to you both about some of that. I'm watching. I am not the expert, but I'm like, that cannot be good. I would never buy a place there because I'm seeing these places get drenched with no roof and the materials are porous. And then all of a sudden they, you know, put up the drywall and even the drywall sometimes is sitting out in the rain. I'm like, how in the world can this be good? I know. I mean, there's, there's one in our neighborhood. We were riding our bikes last weekend mm -hmm. and it, you know, it's bad when you ride or walk past it and you can smell it yes. like coming out yes. of the building. My it's like, like somebody's going to live in that place. Right. Yeah. And no one, and they think, okay, new. So I want to go so many places with this conversation. <laughs> Let's start there though. First of all, people typically think new houses are the best because maybe they haven't had the years and decades to accumulate mold. And there's some truth to that, but let's talk about new versus old because then you have the VOCs and then the construction. So I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what are you looking for when you're looking for a clean home? I want to tell you too, the apartment that I got so sick in was new. Hmm. And that's exactly what happened. It, it rained, well, actually that, and then also the shower pans were cracked. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just a lot of oversight that goes into construction practices that can like really ruin someone's life. Yeah. The big thing now with, with new construction too, it's, you touched on it. While if it's brand new, maybe it doesn't have mold, but the VOCs, if people aren't building like we build, it's full of them. And then the way that you have to build houses now to meet energy code, they are airtight. And so yeah. all of those things are staying in there. 
it and most likely the what we would call a track home is yeah. they're not designed like they haven't put much thought into the HVAC system and and exchanging air and making sure that you know we're getting fresh air and stuff their main objective is to finish this really fast really cheap so they can get somebody in it and sold yeah mm -hmm. most people don't think about what's going on behind the walls they just want it to look pretty mm -hmm. but you can have both <laughs> I agree. So let's talk about someone say uh, they're hiring you or they're looking to construct or they're getting into a home that was constructed or partially constructed. They're getting in maybe and still putting some materials in and picking out some design elements. What are some of the questions of things that the average person is not going to know um, that they should be asking, looking for? Um, tell us kind of go through like if there was a checklist, which I'm sure there's in your book, <laughs> right? Like yes. what, what do you, what questions are you asking? Um, go through some of those kinds of basic things that a, a buyer or a renter should be asking or knowing about before they get into a home. I think uh, if it's an existing home, we want to ask about if it's had any water damage and if it was uh, remediated properly. Um, usually that has to, doesn't that have to be disclosed? Yeah, yes. I mean, legally it does, yeah, whether but, or not people do. Yeah. Um, looking at a house's roof, I mean, you want to look underneath sinks, look behind the washing machine, the dryer. You, you can kind of tell like when things start to go awry, like they'll, um, you'll see cracks in places where they shouldn't be in. And that is a recipe for disaster. And if you have the money to remediate it, that's one thing. But if not, I see a lot of people just like, they find a house that's pretty and they want to overlook the other things. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, a, a, an existing home is tough, right? Because you, yeah. you, you likely aren't buying it to tear it apart and look right. behind the walls. And so it's, it's really hard. That's where, you know, hiring a really good inspector that works for you and doesn't work for the bank or the seller uh, is important because you want to look at the, at the roof but also the windows, the windows, people think that most leaks and all that stuff happens with roofs. And honestly, the windows are the biggest offenders in older homes if they're not flashed properly. And we can tell you from experience that those inspectors that work for the bank, they'll bring, they call it like a FLIR gun and they can shoot the wall and it'll show if there's any moisture. 100% <laughs> do not work. Like we, we did a house for a couple and completely gutted it and they had that report of the FLIR gun and it showed no signs of moisture that that house was it was no. it was basically like a sponge it was like soaking wet open. yeah wow I've had several patients that were so sick and literally one sweet girl she was young in her 20s bought a house and and literally she told me about the soggy walls and of course it was filled with stachybotrys and eventually yeah. she was in a lawsuit it was just horrible for her but um she had no clue. And I think many people until they get sick, like you, Jen, or like me, um, they don't really know that mold can cause this illness. Uh, so, or water damage or intrusion or, and what you said, Rusty is so true. Some of these lead certified, the best, you know, cleanest ecological materials, they're so airtight that all of a sudden you have this differential for condensation or, or temperature or, or just no airflow exchange. Let's talk about that briefly, because that's something I don't know a lot about, but I think it's so critical the ability for air to flow through the house properly. Tell us what do you want to look for between like attic and crawl space and air exchange and no air exchange and what kinds of things would a person think about with that airflow in a home? Sure. And I mean, kind of what you said is one of the things that we like to say is green does not mean healthy. Healthy can mean green, but right. green does not mean healthy all right. the time. And so the HVAC, and I'm going to speak just strictly from where we're at in Texas, because it's yeah. really hard, you know, different climates. But mm -hmm. here, what we are wanting is to not oversize the air conditioner. That's one of the main of, main problems in, in, in high heat areas is that the AC contractors and the homeowners think that I want the biggest, the yes. baddest, and I want it to cool it down really fast. Yeah. What happens is that it will cool it down really fast, so fast that it creates condensation behind the walls. Got it. So we, we want our system size properly. We only use variable speed multi-stage. And so to kind of simplify that is, is it's, it's puffing air uh -huh. constantly. It's not like a force of air, you know, every 10, 15 minutes, it's just puffing air. And by doing that, it is pulling fresh air in mm -hmm. and then, you know, and return is taking the stale air out and exhausting it. ERVs, HRVs help with that too. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> tell us what, tell, what ERB, HRV, I don't know for sure what, what is that? Oh, uh, where we're at in our climate, uh, uh, ERV is more what it's we would use. Energy recovery ventilation. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so basically what that does is it even even while your air conditioner or heater is working yeah. that thing you can set it to exchange the air in your home every 30 minutes it'll okay. completely change yeah. the air and it and basically it brings in fresh air and it I'm, again to simplify it, it pre-cools it before it gets to the air conditioner so it doesn't have to condition it as much and mm -hmm. so it saves on energy Hey, everybody, I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science, and Faith, is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr, and mold and biotoxin-related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. Okay, that makes uh, sense because that de yeah. that um, degree of change is what we don't want, right? We don't want it to go from eighty degrees to twenty degrees or whatever. I'm just randomly yeah. throwing out numbers, but you don't want it to be that dramatic drop. Or, yeah. or okay, what yeah. about? Um, do you find much? Um, first of all, you guys are building homes, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're not necessarily going into old homes and and uh, inspecting a no, lot. Or not you? really. We we would encourage we don't take on very many remodels and our oh. kind of our, our bar for remodels is, are you ready to completely tear yes. this thing apart? Yes. That's, that's yes. where we're at. So. I love that. Cause that's what I, it's literally, and as I've been ever looking for houses, I've always been like, okay, if there is an issue, which I think any house that you're going to buy, there's going to be some issues, right? You're just going to expect that. My thought is always, okay, this is something I'm willing to do. Like if it's a foundational issue, it's like, uh, probably not. <laughs> Yeah. Like, um, and then, and I'd love to know as builders, what are like the things where if you were to see a home or see a remodel or just knowing what you know about construction, what are the kinds of water damage or kinds of issues um, that you're like, that's not probably not worth dealing with? Because obviously you have a window, a little leak, maybe that wall you could replace that feels doable. Maybe ceiling a crawl space that feels doable. Foundational issues, Phil, any thoughts on that? Yeah, if you see cracks in the foundation yeah. that carry up the wall and then even mm -hmm. outside on the brick, I would say that's a that's a run for right. the <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you know, if you have mold growing in your shower on the tiles, that's probably uh, you know either rip your you're going to rip your entire shower out and start over, or that's a run for the hills yeah. situation because shower pans on you know windows are the big offenders on the outside of your house showers on the inside are the worst mm -hmm. you could ask any remodeling contractor and i would imagine they're going to tell you the biggest issues they see are from showers not properly done and unfortunately most of the time they're not they're only waterproofing about two foot mm -hmm. of the wall and it's just doesn't make sense no. to me there's you know? a lot of things <laughs> when i started uncovering like how how to build a house i was like why are why are they bringing in fresh air from the top of the roof where the asphalt shingles are instead of on the side of the home? Like mm. these things, like only waterproofing, like two foot up. There's a lot of just standard practices that are. It don't make sense, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. Oh. Yeah. No, I mean, that's kind of where, where it comes into. And we touched on this a while ago. It's like you could line up five good builders and we're all can make it look pretty and it's going to look like the architect intended. Now what separates good from great is people like us. And I'm going to brag on us is that we care just as much about what happens behind the wall or underneath the floor, things that you as a customer would never see, but that's, that's where we really care about, you know, that's, yeah. that's what's important. And unfortunately in construction, that's not really the case for the most part. 
Right. And again, like most of the stuff going up quickly here is cosmetically going to look okay or maybe yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And inside it's a disaster. So Jen, what did you learn? Obviously you went through this first before you guys met and then you started this company, but you obviously learned uh, on your own really kind of as educated, like what materials and stuff. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you would choose as say, I'm, I'm going to build a home with you guys and we're going to choose materials. What kinds of things um, would I want to think about? <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, like, yeah right. Everything. Um, before I forget to mention the dehumidification is really important, so that would be one thing of course. for our climate. For, yeah, well, unless you live in like Las Vegas, but most places, because yeah, even inside the homes, you have showers going and yeah. you're cooking, and so you know it's all close up tight. Humidity can build up, and so keeping that humidity level down with the whole home dehumidification system that like ties in with your HVAC is awesome. Um, also the air purifiers that basically like they can clean your air up to like hospital grade air. Those are essential too. And those tie in as well. Um, basically starting from like, like a broad scope on materials, you look for things that don't have formaldehyde mm -hmm. and it's used in a lot of building materials simply because it speeds up the curing process. And um, it makes, I guess, mass manufacturing more efficient, economical, but I would encourage people to look at the SDS sheets and sometimes those are helpful, sometimes they're not. Even contacting the um, manufacturer, I mean, that's what I did. I, I actually would contact manufacturers like Drywall and ask them specifically. And a lot of times they would be willing to tell me because it's my health at stake, yeah. you know? And it is kind of a fine line because even with, with other builders, we were kind of worried at first, like, oh, well, y'all are building healthy homes. What does that make my house toxic? But we've had like really good camaraderie and feedback. And I think people see that there is a value here. And it's just something that people haven't really thought about yet is like, oh, what's the health of my house? Like how is, how is the air and the water inside my home like affecting my health? And so um, also avoiding things with like petroleum products on them. The only things that we use with petroleum products are like certain types of inert plastics, but every, there's no tar, there's no, like all the adhesives are all um, VOC free. So I think nowadays there's more out there than there used to be, but it's still a matter of doing, taking the time and doing research. And to add on to that, with doing the research, I think what Jen said is important is calling the manufacturer because what one person might call zero VOC doesn't really mean anything to someone like Jen or someone who's sensitive to chemicals because I mean, vinegar is a VOC, but is it hazardous? There's a big distinction there. Mm -hmm. So even zero VOCs, some of the paints, they have hazardous air pollutants in them. So yeah. that's, that's where you have to really be, you know, mm -hmm. haps are a big deal. Yeah, so. Hazardous air pollutants, mm -hmm. EPA okay. has a um, so that they have a list of HAPs. Cause I would say too, I know a lot about VOCs. I know about measuring them, about filtering them, about the dangers and, and all of that. But HAPs, I don't think that's something that's been on my vocabulary. It's kind of a, it's an, it's probably not a new, new term, but we started using it just simply because there's so much misinformation about the VOCs, yeah. the exempt VOCs like acetone, ammonia, even formaldehyde, like you're in those paints that you buy like at the big box store that say like no VOC green guard certified. Cause it, yeah, I mean, it's not trying to scare everybody, but <laughs> it's just like you said, like you have to do your homework and actually look at it and not read a certification on the label and be like, okay, cool. And we always, always encourage testing, touching, feeling, smelling, you know, mm -hmm. getting nose. it in your head, in your hands and before you put it on your walls or in your, you know, wherever it's going to go. And so like Jen said, it's not meant to scare anyone. The, the good news is, is there's, there's ways to do it. And, you know, we're proving that and, yeah. you know, they don't, these, we're not building mud huts or anything, you know, we're still yeah. building you know, great right. custom homes, you know, so. Yeah, no, that's exciting. And Jen, uh, some of you listeners I know will relate because I have a ton of patients that are incredibly chemically sensitive and have had mold exposure. And this is just such a real issue. Like I said, people all the time. So let's just talk specifics. Like say we're doing a kitchen, the flooring, like I had my office and I was trying to decide between wood or um, 
a luxury vinyl tile and I ended up deciding luxury vinyl tile with a lower VOC was better for me than in the office because the water, what's thoughts on, maybe I made a, a mistake, but <laughs> what are, right? Like what's thoughts on, flooring is a big one, cabinetry is a big one, you know, um, yes. um, mm -hmm. Where would you go with, uh, like, uh, okay, let's start with flooring. What kinds of things flooring, are going to be safer? So you can't go wrong with porcelain tile. Okay. It is inert. It is mm -hmm. uh, zero maintenance. So you can just mm -hmm. clean it with, you know, yeah. whatever. It doesn't stain, doesn't chip. You'd have to really, really, like, take a hacksaw to it for it uh -huh. to chip. Um, some woods, most engineered woods, yeah. I wouldn't uh, yeah. recommend putting in homes, but there's, a few brands out there that are very cognizant of the, um, like I think they're using soy-based glues uh -huh. and PET plastic um, components. Um, carpet, there's healthy carpets that are zero VOC and wool, but the carpet harbors like yes. allergens and it gets dirty and I just, I get a rug because you yeah. can wash a rug, <laughs> yeah. like carpet that's uh, like there. I couldn't agree more. I've seen so much <laughs> issues with carpet, no matter how clean it is. It just, it holds stuff. And so, you, yeah, I totally. In fire six hard. years, I think we've done two carpet installs. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, and looking at, when I was speaking of rugs, like looking at your materials, like um, does it have fire retardants on it? Or yeah. a lot of those stain treatments, they're made out of, chemicals similar to Teflon, they're ex extremely like carcinogenic. Um, and that was kind of one of the, the hard things after we built the home, we're like, okay, so now we have to furnish it. Uh -huh. Like, I was doing these interior design packages for people. I'd be like, hey, West Elm or Crate and Barrel, like, you know, what, did, what kind of foam do you use in your couch? And they don't know because <laughs> the furniture is like, it's so fragmented, that whole industry. And so we actually started Healthier Homes furnishings because right. there was no place for us to source yeah um, you know decor and things right. you actually put in your house rugs yeah <laughs> after, <laughs> after it's built um but going back to okay flooring you said cabinets yeah. we that was that was a pain point um solid wood like plywood and it hardwood yeah um most cabinets are mdf or plywood yeah. or MDF or particle board components and those off gas, like mm -hmm. formaldehyde indefinitely. So um, I think cabinets are one of the worst sources in most. Yes. Homes, right? yeah. I walked into like Home Depot the other day and I saw the cabinet boxes and I'm so used to seeing Iyers and I was just like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> people don't know i feel yeah. so bad like, so, no and, and jen is like when i same thing when i walk into those kinds of stores we won't name any names but sometimes i smell the glyphosate in the aisles i'm like oh it's just so awful like what people just assume is normal or in yes. their garages they have these chemicals or they have the and it's really like we are all swimming in toxic soup as you and i know so well and to get to that clean uh space it feels like we're, we're abnormal but the truth is like <laughs> the the world out there that's ha pending you know um all these chemicals is really a it's an issue yeah. yeah, I think there's a as a growing body of people that are like whole food shoppers that are kind of, I think, starting to take note, like of eating organic is important, yeah. taking your supplements. And that was a part of the reason why we wrote the book is yeah. people just don't think about like they work out and eat right. They don't think about their homes and their right. environments. So um, an environmental medicine, I mean, gosh, it, yeah. It, it's something that is so needed and for me to get well. I mean, Dr. Ray saved my life. Like, my house didn't save my life. Like Dr. Ray saved it. And then I had to get into a clean environment to get well. To maintain. And to maintain. <laughs> yes. I love that. I'm sure you probably heard me say, but I always say clean air, clean water, clean food. Like it starts with these things. There's no amount of supplements or IVs or magical protocols that you can do if you don't have those inputs that are really basic. And there's say I'm in the office of the patient one hour a day, it's those other, you know, 23 hours where they're in bed on a mattress that has flame retardants or with yeah. the, in the kitchen with cabinets that are off gassing or in there rolling around on the carpet that has all these dust and mites and VOCs and all these things. So it really, really does matter our environment. Um, let's talk about airflow equality. We talked just a little bit about that, but I want to talk about like, what uh, do you put in a system of air filtration when you're building the home specialized um, and obviously like I have standalone air filters too, but what would you talk, how would you talk about air quality and air filtration in a new home? Yeah. So, I mean, one thing that we do is we filter the fresh air. 
-hmm. like as it comes in. So our, our air filters and, you know, it, it varies by system, but they're always going to be attached to the AC system. So as the air comes in from outside, it's filtered then. A lot of the times, like if people even have them or just a, let's say a standard AC setup with a filter, the air comes in, it blows around your house, and then it goes to the return <laughs> it's to like get one filtered. Of those things like why are people and, doing right, right. And so you're you're bringing in the, you know caught dirty air, yeah. cycling yeah. it, and then you filter it before it goes back in the house. So we we kind of wanted to catch it before it it gets there. Um, we find that 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 helps, and we're we're you know we have several different purifiers that we use, uh -huh. um, you know, size depending on the system uh the climate you know anything like that so but i was actually in when i was in home depot the other day i saw these um sorry i keep saying it's like big box stores that's okay <laughs> <laughs> um i saw these air filters and they're just tiny and they're like they're thin yeah. and it's i mean i'm sure it helps somewhat but the air filters that we buy i mean it's a worthy investment and they're not super expensive. They're like big suitcases. Yeah. I mean, slide, the, slide in and like the filters about six inches thick. Merv, Merv six, 13 16. or higher yeah. is yeah. considered like super clean air. And so looking at um, the Merv ratings is important whenever you're purchasing your filters. Um, what is the system called that like that purifies? I can't think of. So we use it. It's a, our filter also have an electronic, basically a, a separate filter that that ionizes yeah, like any of the of the yes. particles. You know, right. it does pollen germs. You know, it kind of takes it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. And UV lights are yeah. another awesome add-on yeah. um, for purification because air is tricky. There's the ventilation, purification, um, the thermal components of it. I mean you have to kind of look at all of these different things and then work with someone that is a professional yeah. and we're not like we have HVAC professionals that we are yeah. with, you know, that size them correctly. I mean, these, they run all sorts of, um, yeah, like they, they run basically J. engineering calculations. Yeah. That, that would be like one of the main questions if somebody was getting, talking to a builder about building a new house, it's I want to meet your AC guy. I want to know, like, is the system that, that this person is installing, are they trained on it? Because now they are like basically computers, like they yeah. are very high tech. It's not like it used to be where you had the mercury right. you know, dial <laughs> yeah. and all that stuff. And if they're done wrong, it's really hard to get them fixed. I mean, it, you got to do it right from the start. And so, That's one of those kind of foundation brain issues that it's like piece of the house that you don't want to really mess around with. And I can no. imagine because you're calculating airflow, you're calculating, I mean, really like clean rooms in the hospital, they have these, whatever their quality engineer control people are, yeah. they're literally mechanics of all of the mechanical engineers, basically. Yeah. But, yeah. So that makes sense. Um, what and about- the ducting too. You want to look that? at ducting that's like, that's formaldehyde free or metal ducting, which yes. is more expensive, but it's- yeah. Once you have it, it lasts forever and it's easy to clean. Um, we like, we use, they call it pookie. I don't know what the actual <laughs> term is for it, but it's like the, the mastic that goes around the components in the HVAC systems. You want to get something that's non-toxic for that too. So it's thinking about all the different little pieces and asking, you know, yourselves yeah. and what, what are you using to put this together? And then you go out and source it. And then by the time it's time to install, you got it there for them to use. Yeah, that's kind of what so, I figured. <laughs> um, we talked just a little bit about moisture and moisture is so huge because you and I know, Jen, this mold thing is real and it's so common and it's becoming more and more common just because of poor quality, quick construction, water intrusion. And everywhere you look in the news, there's a hurricane, there's a flood, there's a, every time I see these news stories, I'm like, oh, those poor people, because if they don't really know what they're doing, it's going to be a mold nest <laughs> eventually, right? On some of these. Yes. Things. Yes. So we talked about windows, obviously a big deal, roofs, a big deal. Um, and, and of course, like showers, like you said, um, what about grout? I feel like uh, a lot of people don't know how porous grout is and what some thoughts about, do you use grout? How do you grout? How do you waterproof it? If they are using big tiles, so you don't have a lot of grout, what's some thoughts about a bathroom construction and what matters for mold reduction? Yeah, so we, depending on, you know, we're building custom homes, and so the clients kind of dictate that. We certainly, 
encourage the bigger media tile to eliminate grout lines. We also, grout is something that's kind of, if you're doing tile, you're going to have it. Like yeah. it's, so what do we do? So we, we take and we integrate our, we have a, a water, a penetrating water stop. And okay. instead of painting it on the grout lines and having to do that, you know, every year, we mix it in with the water 50, 50. So it's actually into the grout. That's yeah. called fumes and formaldehyde blocker. But we so, say that yeah. again, Jen, I want to be sure. Fumes and formaldehyde blocker. It basically is like 50, 50, like in, integrated into the grout. And so it, it helps to waterproof it. <laughs> and then we also, you know, we talked about those showers, right? Where like standard is about two foot up from the shower floor. We don't do that. We waterproof all the way to the ceiling. Uh, we use a system. This is, there are other brands, but the one we use is a Curdy system. I'm not, you know, I don't have an issue saying that one because it's so, it's such an awesome it's a great system. system that if any water does get through that grout and gets behind there, it hits this Curdy waterproofing and it just goes right to the drain. Like there's no, it doesn't linger. It's not going to hit drywall. It's not going to get anywhere where it. It's it, like a plastic type yeah. inert plastic that goes yeah. along the wall in the shower pan. It's all integrated to the drain. So it's really, it's a really for the money and it doesn't cost that much more. It's just, it takes more time. And yeah. that's kind of what, you know, you have to put in the time to do this right. And also the tiles sticking with porcelain. Huh? This porcelain's um, or ceramic is more porous, and porcelain's pretty much porous. pretty much like can't penetrate it. Same thing with um, quartz. Okay, more expensive, be beautiful <laughs> quartz yeah. showers. What about marble? Is that going to be marbles? Something? Marble oh, can porous. yeah, it's porous. Plus, um, you have to continually continually seal it. Okay, so it's a lot more maintenance. The cool thing nowadays, though, with porcelain, you can get slabs that look like mm -hmm. marble and i mean they're they're beautiful and so oh that's uh, great to know yeah in my experience with clients patients um the showers are so like you said so often in often beautiful new homes that had no waterproofing and you know no maintenance of the grout and it just went right through <laughs> uh, i've seen yeah. lots and lots of those showers that get pulled out and there's mold um, yeah. so super common um, what about basements under the underground level or, uh, you know, below grade level, um, window wells, what kinds of things would you think about with, cause basements always make me nervous because <laughs> there's always, that's that's true. Earth, mm -hmm. right? yeah, so to, yeah. What kinds of things would you think about when constructing, say you wanted to finish a basement, um, and you're building the home or you have control over it. What are the things that you're going to think about with basements, below grade window wells, anything particular there? So we don't do a lot of basements and where we're at in Texas, but we, we do some walkout basements where you're all kind of building into yeah. the side of the hill. So the, the first thing that we're going to do if we're building that house is we're, we're going to pour the concrete. We're not going to use cinder blocks. Yeah. I know a lot of people like to use cinder blocks to do their basements. We pour concrete wow. stem walls yeah. and we waterproof it. And then we put a French drain system uh -huh. Instead of just putting dirt back, we're yeah. putting gravel with pipes. And so the water, you're not going to stop it from yeah. getting you, but at least you can give it quick access to get, get away. <laughs> right? And then it that that's kind of the the level that we take it. It does cost a little bit more, uh, but it's, I mean, it, it sure saves when, it, you know, yeah. if you have an issue. It's, and we also put tar. That's what I said, waterproof. Yeah, waterproof, like two layers of at least two or three layers. It's probably overkill yeah. of waterproofing on the concrete. So, I mean, concrete is porous, like you said. Yeah. Got it. And then, of course, like when you say a French drain, is that like a classical hook to a sump pump or what is that? How does that no, work? So the French drain in, in our instance, being on the side of a hill, okay. is so the water is going to hit that concrete yeah. wall. And instead of it just being dirt, yeah. you fill it up with big gravel. So it okay. has work its way Got to it. the bottom and okay. then there's a drain pipe there and it can it, Got it. It. that makes perfect sense um, yeah. it's for my ignorance I no no, no that's no. fine i mean we it's great that's a yeah. super super important question is is we don't even like i said we don't do a lot of basements but even our foundations we don't like to put dirt up against right. it we always like to have some sort of a gravel barrier there so yeah that's so I mean, as far as finishing out on the inside mm -hmm. there are some paints um, that are like very 
uh, alkaline, I guess you could say, where mold can't grow on it. And so yeah. using that as like a, a it's a primer, so a pre-primer, yeah. yeah, um, would be helpful. And then paint is such a big deal. I mean, that that's more area in your house is paint yes. than anything else by a long, long shot. And um see like using a paint that seals the walls yeah. has been critical for us in terms of being able to build healthy. Um, so much so that we started like we we have our own manufacture paint. our own paint. <laughs> wow. Like having none of the nasty chemicals in it, but it, it effectively seals the walls. So if you are moving into like a, a remodel or if you're doing a basement, um sealing off any kind of off gassing or whatever's going on back there kind of helps with peace of mind. <laughs> And then, you know, the last component of the basement, obviously, it's going to be dehumidification to, yeah. you know, keeping that moisture out of there. Uh, the window wells are going to just need to be really flashed properly uh, to keep keep that, you know, you don't want yeah. them leaking. So. Yeah. Now that makes so much sense. Um, so we <laughs> talked a little bit about paint. If you were to buy a home and you feel like you've gotten all the deal, like there's no mold that you found and everything seems clean. Um, would you recommend repainting everything with something like you said, just because of that being such a big deal? That makes mm -hmm. sense. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a small cost for yeah. you know, something that's going to last a very long time. And plus like you get to pick your own pretty colors. Right. And, right. What <laughs> about uh, brands and styles and even including your own, what would you recommend for paints? What do you mean? Well, oh, you mean like yeah, like actual, yeah. Uh, like what kinds of brands would people be looking for? Or maybe yours. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, help your home. Your home's paint. Help your home is good. Uh, um, that's all we use. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we don't use any others, so I Perfect. I would need to without. I wouldn't have an issue recommending if I had used it before. Be new, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. That's perfect. We yeah. can absolutely. There are others out there, and I'm not. I'm not bad mouthing them. I'm sure they're fine. We just I, we had never used them, so yeah. Well, well I that's part of the reason too why we made our own because I couldn't find any other paints that like were at the level of like less chemicals and kind of. Yeah, no, I love this. <laughs> it really is an industry that needs a revamp and you guys have clearly found all multiple solutions and you created, <laughs> I, I love it. Um, Jen, in your experience and your first experience with the mold and then trying to find and being so sick and trying to find a place that, to live and learning all that you could about building your first home, what was the thing that was most surprising to you, either cost wise or just like, wow, I cannot believe the average person has no idea. What would you say is a, was the biggest shock in that process? Mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular that comes to mind? Honestly, it's the amount of chemicals that go in everything that goes into a home. Yeah, I mean it's it's sh it's shocking and it's sad. Mm -hmm. um, homes weren't always so closed up, yeah. and so it really uh, didn't affect people like it does today. I mean, it's for energy code reasons, which is excellent. I mean, we all want to be greener, yeah. but that's over the last thirty years, those have gotten stricter and stricter. And if you look at the rate of chronic disease, it's gone up too. And I'm sure it's not just because of that, but it's definitely a contributor. Now more people have chronic disease than people that don't. Um, so that was, that's shocking. But yeah, it's just, it's what people put in their houses and they just don't think about it, you know? You're right. The awareness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a, as a builder too, I mean, and I, Jen, I'm sure I know she knows, but there are so many, so many moving parts and, and materials that go into a build like that, tar. that most people that don't even, won't even think about working with a builder. And so that's, that's where it becomes important of doing that research and knowing, you know, okay, this material is going in, let me find a solution. Cause there's solutions, there's mm -hmm. workarounds, there's material. Like out gas, there. natural gas, right? Yeah. It's, not good for you and so we don't really put it in homes unless people want it yeah. um but a solution for like a fireplace that's natural gas is to actually have them they're called direct vent and so they yeah. vent out the side of the home and they're completely enclosed and so no gas can get in your house but you still have the warmth you still have like the look and feel of the gas fireplace I love that you mentioned that, Jen, because the studies have shown, and I um in my condo here, there's still a gas um, range that the benzene that's off gassing, even when the stove is off, is mm -hmm. there. So, like, there is you know natural gas and benzene products which are carcinogenic, 
um, even when we're not using that stove. So I love that you said that because most people are not aware. Um, and like you said, the clean air, people don't know what they're literally um, Walter Crinion, who is a colleague of Dr. Ray's as well. Uh, he would say 80% of our environmental toxic load is from the air that we breathe and probably no more yeah. commonly from the homes that we live in, which is like you said, not to scare people, but I'm all about awareness. And I deal with the people who have illness and have dealt with mold like you have, and they want to do the things they can to be clean and live clean and live well. So this is critical information. Um, you talked about some things that were like, like in the shower, that special um, material and, and design, and it wasn't super expensive. What would you say is the biggest thing that does cost a little more? And obviously to me, these things are worth it, but what would you say, where would you say in a super clean home that you're going to spend? There's probably a lot of places you're going to spend more money, but what are the things that might be a little more surprising that you're, you're going to want to put in more money in these things? Yes, yeah, for us. And there's a lot of misinformation out there about insulation. Yes. And so we use closed cell foam insulation and that I want to make that distinction that the most people are using open cell and it is nasty, nasty stuff. It's like a sponge yeah. closed cell. Once it cures in 24 hours, it's hard as a rock, not going to off gas. We okay. take it to the next level and we seal it up uh -huh. anyway, our sealer. We, we seal the entire house. cavity of the home. Wow. So so when you walk into one of our new homes, you're not going to, you're not even going to smell wood. You're not going to smell mm -hmm. anything. It's, it's, we even had a, we had an appraiser one time say this, this wasn't a new house because it didn't smell like paint. And I'm like fumbling for my phone. I'm like, can you say that again? It's like the best commercial. So that our is. insulation, our close insulation, it is quite a bit more expensive than, than standard insulation. I would also say that the, the other thing that's a little more expensive is our, we will not build a house without putting a full-time superintendent on that job to manage that job, to make sure that what we're telling our clients that we're going to do is actually getting done. And so if a builder's not willing to do that, if they're just driving by once a day, yeah. that's, there's no way to guarantee that the, that the tradespeople are, you know, if they ran out of, of our adhesive yeah. and they ran to the truck and grabbed just whatever from the big box store to finish the job, they're not doing it to be malicious. They're just right. trying to finish their job. The oversight is huge. And so the oversight is a big deal to make sure that those little things don't happen because. Plus they know what products we use, the project managers or the conduit between the homeowners. I mean, it's all, it's important, I think, to have your like your little family that's. Yeah your side for building a home because I mean it's where you're going to spend 90% of your time is inside especially people that work from home tremendous and I love that you said that because so often especially nowadays when workforce is harder to get and whether it's medical field or construction field the quality of the workers sometimes isn't as like it used to be it just yes. it's harder so to find really good people right and mm -hmm. these may be people who are well-intentioned but if they're not trained and they're certainly not engineers or they don't have the knowledge level that you do I really um, love that extra step that you guys do because it's so critical and it's rare like you said I have all these constructions <laughs> next door I'm like watching and I don't know what I'm doing but I'm like I'm flabbergasted to see what's <laughs> happening in the average home and apartment and things mm -hmm. Well, yes. what yeah. I, I always I tease our clients as they you know when we're interviewing them, they'll say what's what's the hardest thing and I always say overcoming what the last builder did to you, <laughs> you know that, that's the hardest <laughs> yeah. thing you know proving yeah. that we're yeah. not that Maybe same, not the same. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. well tremendous well thank you for your work in the world if you guys are listening you want to for sure get their book this is called healthier homes a blueprint for creating a toxin-free living environment um, published September, 2022. I will be sure wherever you're listening to have those links below. Um, so you can grab a copy on Amazon or anywhere you get books. This is such a needed resource. And like I said at the beginning, if you didn't hear me, this is a beautiful book. You're gonna wanna own it and hold it and flip through it. It's really, really well done, which speaks to the work that you do. Last question I just wanna leave with Jen and Rusty too. What do you wish that you would have known 20 years ago before all this? What is like the one piece of advice that you wish you would have known years ago? Um, I think hmm, I'm guilty of it too. Um, not really taking, I guess, working out, eating right, all that kind of thing. Not taking the time to really take care of myself and my body until things break. 
And that's, if I have had this knowledge 20 years ago and like really started thinking about what I was subjecting my body to, I wouldn't have ever lived in a moldy apartment. You know, I mean, of course that, it's hard to say because a lot of times it's behind the walls and you just don't know. But I think that um, maintaining your health and wellness, not letting it get bad and then trying to fix it, maintaining it is like, it's what everyone should be striving for. Brilliant. And hopefully this interview has even brought some awareness where people are like, oh, I thought my home was okay, but I'm not feeling so well. And so thank you guys for the work that you're doing in the world. Thank you for taking the time today. Um, absolutely love the work you're doing and appreciate you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Really appreciate we it. Enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.